Father God, as we come into a time to get into your word, as we come into a time to hear divinely from you, Lord, we ask that you would uh, allow ourselves to uh, take a moment and focus on you, to really uh, push aside the things that are in and around our life, the things that are happening later this week, the things that are happening later than today, for just a few moments, focus on you. May we recognize the cost, the cost of what it takes to have this word, the cost of what it takes to receive this word. Lord, may we allow ourselves to really absorb your presence. Don't let one of us leave here the same way we came in. Lord, let us leave here feeling differently, challenged, changed, and have truly experienced your presence. Lord, we thank you for this moment. We praise you for this moment. And all God's people say, Amen. Amen. Today we enter week three of what looks to be a six-week series that we are calling Resilient, and we are looking at uh, this guy by the name of Joseph, which we have said this is not uh, Jesus' earthly father, Joseph, but yet another one, another guy, a guy who was, um, who was uh, thrown into a pit, sold into slavery, wrongly accused, put in prison, and pretty much betrayed by everybody who... He thought cared about it. Yet through all of these things, he remained resilient. We've been identifying this word, we've been defining this word resilient by the definition that comes right out of the dictionary, which what it means to be resilient is it means the ability to withstand or recover from difficult conditions. And this is what we've been seeing through the life of Joseph. We've been seeing this week after week. We've been learning that we can do the same as we examine his life. And it's interesting, we said this in the very first week, the very beginning of this, that his story is found in the book of Genesis. And he consumes more chapters and he gets more screen time than anybody else in the book of Genesis. And this is the book that documents creation. It's got Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. It's got all these great guys in there. Yet he's the one getting all the attention. The reason being is because God wanted to communicate some things that you and I need from his life. And that's what we're learning from his life, this idea of being resilient. It's interesting because all throughout the Bible, we see that God constantly encourages us to stay the course. That God is constantly communicating to us that we can withstand and that we can recover and that we can push forward. This idea of being resilient. There's a passage in Isaiah, the 41st chapter. It's verse 10. I want to share it with you. It's a verse that I believe that we could almost just read, focus on for about two minutes, and we could go home. It says that we don't need to be afraid. God says, don't be afraid, for I am with you. Don't be discouraged. Why? Because I'm your God. And I will strengthen you, and I will help you, and I will hold you up with my righteous right hand. This passage, why would we start off here? Because in case you haven't been here over the last several weeks, this passage right here sums up this entire series that we are in. Right here, it captures it. This is a passage that I believe that many of us should maybe make our life first right now. That maybe this is the perfect verse that we need to memorize, that we need to put in our car, that we need to put in our cubicle, that we need to put in our, in our work box, that we, that we need to put everywhere around us. Because this passage, it sums up what we've been talking about, that there is no need to be afraid. Why? Because he's with us. There's no reason to be discouraged. Why? Because he's God and that he knows what he's doing. Yeah. We read that and some of us hear that, but yet we're exhausted. We're tired, we're wore out, and we're being honest, some of us are sitting here and we really just want to give up. And he says, but I will strengthen you. I will help you. And this last part, maybe it matters to you, it sure matters to me, he says, and I will hold you up. There are many times in this life it's really hard to even stand up, much less walk. You have to find the strength through the pain, through the suffering, through the discouragement, through the conditions and circumstances around us, through the storms that we find ourselves in. Yet he tells us time and time again, I am with you. Don't be afraid. Don't be discouraged because I'm God. 
I know you're tired and wore out. I will swoop in and I will strengthen you and I will hold you up. I tried to write this sermon four different ways this week. I exhausted myself for absolutely no reason. And what was happening was I was trying to complicate something that God was saying, I want you to keep simple. Sometimes I do that. I'm stubborn. Anybody else stubborn? <laughs> the person next to you is, so just look at them. I, I struggled with this because I, I really tried to elaborate and extend out, and yet God just kept saying, Put the passage out there, and I'm going to do the rest. And so that's what we're going to do. We're going to read our passage today. We're going to continue going through the life of Joseph. And God is going to meet us where we are, and he's going to tell us what we need to hear. But I want to go ahead and tell you what I know that God would have us take in this passage. And there's going to be more, probably, that you will get. But one of the things that we're going to grab from this, and what we're going to see through the life of Joseph is, is this, that we need to identify. The thing that is holding us back. In other words, I might word it this way. It's time to let go of the thing that is holding you back. It is time to let go of some things in your life that are holding you back from reaching the place that God wants you to be. And we're going to see this in his life. There are some things in our life that need to change. I'm going to say that again because I don't think you even heard me. There are some things in your life and in my life that need to change. And, and here's the thing. When we encounter storms and when we encounter trials and when we encounter difficult seasons of life, they are never pointless. When we find ourselves in not so ideal situations, we're talking about resilience, the ability to withstand and recover from difficult conditions which we already identified as constant in life. When we find ourselves in these difficult conditions, in these difficult seasons, these storms and trials, they are never pointless. They are always for a purpose. So whatever you're going through in your life right now, I want to tell you something. God is up to something. It's not just happening to happen. You're not just going through a rough season. It's just not a rough week. It's not just a rough month or year. God is up to something in your life. And I got to tell you, when things are happening in your life, the storms and the trials and the not so ideal situations, there's oftentimes something that you need to deal with in your life. In other words, God is trying to grow you as a person and as one of his children to bring you into a place you need to be. And let's be honest. The growth that you and I need, it often comes in the storms. Y'all are quiet this morning. If you're tired, if you fall asleep, just knock the person next to you. Wake them up. It, I know it's tough to hear this, but it's the reality. It, it's, in the, it's in the storms of life that this is where we grow. Listen, I don't know about you, and maybe I'll just make it personal. I don't grow necessarily in the ways that I know I need to when life is all good. In other words, it's in the, when I'm hanging out on the beach and everything is grand and great and every, the stars have aligned and everything's perfect, that's not when I'm growing. I'm growing when life is falling apart. I'm growing when I'm in a season that doesn't make sense. In other words, listen, it's in the seasons of drought that I learned that I need a drink of living water that only he can provide. It's in the seasons of where I feel all alone that I have to reach out and grab hold of him like I've never experienced him before. It's in the seasons of pain that I honestly find that I need to depend on him that I wouldn't have depended on if I was in a season that life was all grand. You see, here's the thing. You and I need to recognize that when things are happening and stirring around, when we are in the difficult moments where we are happy to push on and be resilient, there is oftentimes change. There's oftentimes things in our life that God is trying to shape and deal with you and me on. Now, this might not sound very exciting. And you might not be like, yippee, character building. <laughs> but this is what happens. And this is what's happening in the life of Joseph. Joseph... You know, we, we've said this. God had made him some promises. 
God had told him he was going to do amazing things. God had gifted him. He, he had gifted him and he had given him talents and promises and he had skills with a Z. He was handsome. He had everything all together. And God said, I am going to put you into a place of leadership like never before. A place that you could never imagine. I'm going to use you in ways that are beyond your comprehension. These were promises that God has, had given him. Yet this wasn't what Joseph was experiencing, was it? He was actually experiencing the opposite. His life seemingly took a 13-year detour. How many of you feel like you're on a detour right now? You never thought that you'd be on the road you're on. Much less who's in your car with you. <laughs> or much less the car you're driving. Much less this is what life is now. A 13-year detour of pain, heartache, and difficult conditions. This is where Joseph found himself yet. There was a purpose. Because there were some things that he needed to deal with. There were some things that were holding him back. There were areas that he needed to grow. And so, uh, we're pretty much ready to begin. Let's pick up what we left off last week. You may remember last week we left off that Joseph was sitting in prison. He was sitting in a jail cell for a crime that he didn't commit. He was, he was wrongly accused by Potiphar's wife. And that's where we pick up towards the end of chapter 39, verse 21. The Bible says that the Lord was with Joseph in prison and he showed him his faithful law. And the Lord made Joseph a favorite with the prison warden. There's something we should note right here, and that is this. In spite of Joseph's circumstances, in spite of the conditions that he found himself in, his gifting and God's promises still were shining true. When we read this, I don't know if you see it, but I see it. Do you see what's happening? Regardless of where Joseph was, he was still finding God's favor. Think about it. He was his daddy's favorite. He had favoritism back then. Then he gets sold into slavery, and then he's a favorite to Potiphar. Now he's in prison, and once again, he is a favorite, and God is shining his favor and presence here. What's the point? When God has called you to a place, when God has placed a mantle on your life, when he has given you promises, which by the way, he's given all of us promises. We talked about this in week one. When God has called you to do something, when God has placed his presence and his favor on your life, the blessings will always come through, regardless of your circumstances, regardless of your conditions. He will shine through. Verses 22 and 23, before long, the warden put Joseph in charge of all the other prisoners and over every, uh, everything that happened in the prison. The warden had no worries because Joseph took care of everything. The Lord was with him and caused everything he did to succeed. Listen, I'm going to remind you of this until you get sick of hearing it. Because in case you've missed it, week after week throughout this series and throughout this study in the life of Joseph, we keep seeing the theme. And the thing that God keeps communicating is this, that he was with Joseph. He keeps saying it over and over. We keep reading it over and over. We see God was with Joseph. God was with Joseph. God was with Joseph. What's the point? The point is this, wherever you find yourself this morning, God is with you. And we forget this way too often, that regardless of where you are, whether you are in the pit, the prison, or the palace, he is with you. And if he is with you, I want you to hear this, you are going to succeed. We can put it a little bit more biblical. You will be victorious because he's victorious, because greater is he. Because all this stuff that's going on that, that he's doing, not that you're doing, because he's with you. And this is something that I think too often we fail to recognize that, okay, we're, if we're in the pit, if we're in the prison, the question shouldn't be, why me? The question shouldn't be that we're shaking our fist at this moment. But rather, the question should be, okay, God, what is it? That you are trying to show me in this moment. What is it that you want me to learn in this pit? What is it that you want me to learn in this prison? 
What is it that needs to change in me? What is it that I can grow and deepen my connection with you? Lord, I, I might not like these conditions. I might not like, understand these conditions. I don't understand why this is falling apart in my life. I don't understand why that isn't working out in my life. I don't understand why I'm feeling this hurt, why I'm feeling this pain, why I'm dealing with this anxiety, why this thing can't work out and that thing can't work out. God, I don't understand it, but I'm not called to understand it. So therefore, I'm here because you are with me. You are at work. What is it that you want to do in me? If we can get to this place and ask this question, I believe we can kind of speak things up a little bit. Some of us are a little stubborn. We're going to keep coming back to that. Look what happens. We're, we're now in chapter 40, verses 1 through 3, 7 and 8. Sometime later, Pharaoh's chief cupbearer and chief baker offended the royal master, and Pharaoh became angry with these two officials, and he had them put them in prison where Joseph was, the, the place of the captain guard, and he says, why do you look so worried today, they asked, and he replied, we both had dreams last night, but no one could tell us what they mean. Interpreting dreams is God's business, Joseph replied. Watch this. Go ahead and tell me your dreams. What just happened there? Whoa, Jojo. He's overstepping some boundaries, ain't he? I mean, look what he just said. He just said interpreting dreams is God's business. It's God's business. Now go ahead and tell me your dreams. Can I tell you what we just saw in case you missed it? We just saw Joseph's issue. We just saw the, the thing that needs to be dealt with is an issue of pride. And it is gleaming through so clearly right here. He says interpreting dreams is something God can, only God can do. And he says, I can do it. Tell me. This is his issue. And if you remember, this was an issue that he's had for a while. For those of you who are here in week one, you'll remember that this is what got him in trouble to begin with with his brothers. He had some dreams where he was going to be in a place of authority and they'd be bowing down to him. And he told them about it. The only purpose for telling them was to puff up his own chest. And like, guess what? Guess what my destiny looks like and your destiny looks like? He, he had an issue with, with pride. And see, he hadn't let it go. This was something he hadn't dealt with. It was something that was holding him back, something that needed to be dealt with. And pride here, can I tell you, I believe it was the surface issue because where pride is, there's oftentimes a deeper issue. And you know what I think the deeper issue is? It's trust. I think there's a deeper issue of trust because let's be honest, many of us, we have the same issue. And we would never call it pride. Because we're like, we're not a proud person. People that usually say they're not a proud person are usually proud. And we would never say, oh, I'm a proud person. But if we were being honest, we would look in a little bit deeper and say, yeah, I'm, I do have some trust issues. Because let me tell you the trust issues. The pride issue is this, is that we think we can do it on our own. We may say that we can't do it on our own, yet we're the ones doing it on our own. Because if we, it's this trust thing, well, I'm going to take this into my own hands. It's going to be my resources. It's going to be my efforts. It's going to be my skills. And this is what Joseph's doing here. He says, I can handle this. I can fix this. I think way too often, this is you and me, we think we can fix it. And we would never say we have an issue with pride. But it's really, there's a trust thing here. Look what happens. We'll see it a little bit more clearly. Because Joseph still thinks he can handle it on his own. Look at verses 14 and 15. Please remember me. And do me a favor when things go well for you. Mention me to Pharaoh so that he might let me out of this place. For I was kidnapped from my homeland, the land of the Hebrews, and now I'm in prison. But I did nothing to deserve it. So do you see what happened? So Joseph, he, he interprets the dreams. He does what only God can do. And all of a sudden, when we read verses 14 and 15, they're leaving. He says, please remember, look at this, me. Mention me 
to Pharaoh so that I may get out of this place because I was kidnapped from my homeland and I'm in prison and I don't deserve this. Do you see there is a major difference? We've been reading week after week that the Lord was with him. The Lord was with him. Yet now it's me, 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 me. Joe, 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 Joe. What's happened is Joseph has taken matters in his own hands. And what God is doing here is God is saying, Joseph, I want all of you. I want complete dependency. I'm going to put you in a place for you to do some amazing things. But when you get in that place, you're going to have to depend on me like never before. You know, you've still got some issues that we need to work on. There are some things that need to be done. And we see the results as we keep exploring this passage of what happened when Joseph did it in his own ways. He interprets these dreams with the chief bearers and uh, they get released. Look at verse 23. However, <laughs> look at this. However, the, the chief bearer forgot all about Joseph, never giving him another thought. What does the Bible just show us? Joseph's ways didn't work. They didn't work, did they? Let's keep reading. Chapter 41. Two full years later, Pharaoh dreamed. I'm going to let that, I just want to let that sink in for a second. Two full years later, Pharaoh dream, dream, dream. I, I, Does that seem painful to you? Does anybody feel that? I, I mean, I, I know. I feel it. I mean, think about this. He has been stripped of his family. He has been thrown in a pit, sold into slavery. He had success. Things were kind of looking up. Then he was wrongly accused, stripped of all of that once again. Now he is sitting in a prison cell for a crime that he didn't even commit. And he is sitting there week after week, month after month. I'm going to keep going. Year after year. And I don't know about you, but I'm sure in Joseph's mind, there was this question of how long? How much longer? Think about this. Joseph knew that God had made him a promise. God had promised him that he was going to use him in ways that were beyond comprehension. and was going to put him in places of leadership to do amazing things. He knew this. This is why he was able to be resilient. This is why he was able to keep pushing. But at some point, let's be honest, you know he was sitting there thinking, did you forget about me? Because let's be honest, this is where some of us feel right now. It's been a while. And some of us are sitting here and we are we walked in this door and we are in our minds. Whatever we're dealing with, whatever the situation, we are we are done. And we just keep thinking, how long? How much longer, God? Have you forgotten about me? Don't think for one second JoJo wouldn't send in that prison just thinking, have you forgotten about the promises you made? I mean, I was with you in the pit. I, I thought you had a plan there. And I was with you when I got put in slavery. I mean, you still bless me. I mean, but now I'm still in this prison. It's been years, God. And some of us, we are sitting here and we're like, God, it's been weeks. It's been months. Some of us are sitting here and it's been years. And we want to know when will it be over And I believe that what God is saying to you and me, and listen, it, it, I'm telling you that this is, this is God's word. He's wanting us to get this. If we are sitting here and this is where we are, the question we should be asking is not how much longer. It's not why have you forgotten me. The question should be, Lord, what is holding me back? What is it that you want to change in me? What is it that you're wanting to do in me? What is it that you're wanting me to learn in this moment in time? Because I trust you. You've made promises. You've made promises to me. You've spoken to me. You've given them to me over and over again in your word. I know you're going to do What's best? What is it? 
Things are about to shift to Joseph. Things are about to change. We see them in verse 15. Pharaoh said to Joseph, I had a dream last night. No one here can tell me what it means. But I have heard that when you hear about a dream, you can interpret it. Here we go again. Here's a moment. How's he going to respond? Verse 16. It is beyond my power to do this. But God can tell you what it means. And he will set you at ease. Do you see what just happened? A breakthrough occurred. breakthrough occurred that needed to happen. Now he's humble. Now he's broken. Now he's dependent on God Almighty. He's, he's saying, look, am I awesome? Am I great? Do I have skills? Is it my looks? Is it my good tongue that, that, that I know the words to say and I know the right things to do? Is it my... No, no, no. It's none of those things. It's not my gifting. It's not my talents. It's not my promises. It's not my skills. No, no. It's none of those things. I am broken. It is none of me. It is all of him. And therefore, God can work through me. I'm willing if he wants to use me. I'll do whatever he needs me to do. But it is only him. Listen, something we need to note, and it's important. It's important. Don't miss this. Joseph's character changed well before his circumstances changed. That's good. Oh, that's really good. And that, 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 that may be the only thing you need to hear. Listen, his character, who he was, and and his relationship with God, it changed well before his circumstances ever changed. Because there was a purpose in his valley, there was a purpose in his season, and there is a purpose in your valley, and there is a purpose in your season. And so here's the principle. We are almost done. Here's the takeaway that, that I believe that maybe we should take with us, and that is this. You can either go through your valley, you can either go through your season, or you can grow through your valley, and you can grow through your season. The choice is yours. It's that simple. You have two choices. You can either go through your valley, through your season, through this difficult condition and moment in your life, or you can grow through it. We said in week one, one of the most devastating things about our current season. Let's be honest. I, it doesn't matter what you're dealing with in your life. We are all in a national mess. I mean, you know, it, it, things are all out of whack between COVID and everything else. We are all in a crazy season. And we said this in week one. Regardless of COVID, regardless of the trials and pain and season that we are in, what would make all of this more tragic he said, if we as the church, if we as Christians, as, as God's children, were to come out on the backside of this crazy season, having missed the presence of moving of God's Holy Spirit, that would make this more tragic. Because it's in moments like this where everything is turned upside down. It's in storms and trials and moments like this where we get to experience God like never before. I'm going to say it a different way. It's in your valley and in your current season. It's in this opportunity that you have to grow like never before. And part of growing, listen, is identifying the things in your life that we need to submit to him. Because let's be honest, these are oftentimes the things that we hold back. When life is falling apart, when we're in these difficult moments, there are things that we say, okay, God, I can trust you with all that, but I can trust you with this. God, I'll give you this part of me, but I ain't giving you that part of me. And God says, no, I, I, I want complete submission. Some things need to change. Growth needs to occur. And so you are not in your prison. You are not in your pit by accident. There's a purpose. There is a purpose in your season. The question is, what's holding you back? It's time to let it go. To submit all things to him so that we can push on, so that we can withstand, so that we can recover, and so we can succeed in all conditions to be resilient.
May God speak to us right now and may he show us the areas that we need to change. Let's pray. Father God, Lord, I thank you today for the opportunity to grow. I thank you today for the opportunity to connect with you like never before. Lord, one of the things that we sometimes fail to recognize is that your presence, your power, your love, your hope, your peace, your joy, you are the closest to us when we're in the storm, when we're in the valley, when we're in the difficult seasons. And Lord, it's in these moments that we can experience you like never before. It's in these moments we can learn to submit to you in ways we've never learned to submit to you. It's in these moments that we can learn to love you like we've never loved before. It's in these moments that we can experience your love and to feel love like we've never felt before. Lord, I, I don't always understand why you lead the way you do, but this morning, this was the word that you led for us. Or that we need to identify in us some things that we need to submit to you. Lord, some areas in our life that are holding us back. Lord, we see this word resilient. And we want to be that. We want to be able to withstand the difficulties of life. We want to be able to withstand the difficulties of our marriage, the difficulties of our career, the difficulties of our health, the difficulties of our family, the difficulties of life and finances, and, and, and Lord, the things that we are encountering. Lord, not only do we want to be able to withstand these things, we want to be able to recover from these things. We want to be able to have a smile on our face. We want to be able to have joy in our life. We want to have peace that passes all understanding. We want to have all these attributes that are there that we claim, that, that, that we know we can have because of you. But Lord, through it all, we're missing it because there are some things that we just won't let go. Lord, may we identify it. May we right now in this moment just stop fighting you and say, here it is. I don't even want to do it anymore. I don't want it to be my way. I don't want it to be my skills. I don't want it to be my strength. It's never good enough. It's never worked and it never will. But what I do want is your strength. What I do want is your peace. What I do want is your ways. Because all of that equals success. It equals victory. Lord, for those of us who are tired, may you swoop in and strengthen us and hold us up with your righteous right hand. Lord, because right now we were thinking, okay, I gotta give things up, I gotta make some changes, but God, I don't have the strength to do it. I don't have the strength to change this. I don't have the strength to change that. I'm tired, I'm tired, I'm exhausted, I'm wore out. God, if this is us, may we just place ourselves in your hands. We don't have to do anything except just give it to you. Lord, we pray these things in your name, believing they will be done. Lord, may we determine success today. May we make that decision that we have determined that we are going to experience victory because you're in charge and you're with us. Lord, we're not ending this prayer right now. We're continuing it. Lord, meet us wherever we are. Meet us wherever we are. Let us sit still and let us just reflect on him. This is a time just to pray. We're going to sing a song, and if you feel like singing, that's fine. But I, I, I tell you what, I would encourage you to just pray. So oftentimes we're running crazy. We're running to and fro, and we've got to be here and there. And, 
and we're so focused on so many other things that there are rare moments that we are still over and over and over and over and over again in the Bible. It says, be still, be still, be still, be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am right with you. Be still and receive my best. Be still and let me do what needs to be done. And right now, may we just for a moment, just allow him to meet us where we are. Allow him to just speak into our hearts, our minds, and our spirits. May he whisper his still small voice in our ear. The enemy is yelling right now. He is loud. And he is trying to yell in your ears and in your heart. And he's trying to make sure you can't hear his voice. The devil, he's a liar. He's the author of confusion. Put him in his place. You tell him to shut it. Begin to speak the name of Jesus. The Bible says the, the devil trembles at the mere mention of his name. And in Jesus' name right now, devil, you be quiet so that we can hear the voice of God. So that he can whisper the things he wants us to hear. Right now. 